treat for you today when I went out to Garda for the Europeans, which if you saw the video earlier, you know that myself and Guy won. We had a GPS, pretty high quality GPS on all week and I do a little bit of data analysis. So I've loaded it all into Nord Analytics, Nord Player to have a play around and bring to you some of the details. Now on top of that, what I've managed to do is grab the data from the boat that came second, uh, Phil Walker and John Mather. Now that's just a, a GPS from their Garmin, so it's not quite the same resolution in terms of nailing down into the boat handling type of stuff. But what it is, is really good for looking at the kind of strategy and tactics and some of the race situations. Yeah, without further ado, let's uh, jump into that data. We've basically got everything here so down below me got phil and john myself and guy in the top over there and then a a little map of the course the first thing when i looked at the data was that our starts were generally a little bit better race race two shows that the onboard footage side by side of both the start the audio you're hearing will be from guy talking us through the start so I turn the volume on that and we can just listen to the communication So guys call to uh, go there. That's go time right there. And if you look at the stats of the two boat, but you can see in the graph to make that a little bit bigger for you, you can see that guy and I got a jump uh, on Phil at the start here, just accelerated a, a few seconds earlier and at at the gun we're both pretty much up to speed but me and guy just going a fraction quicker like you know 0.4 of a knot still a significant amount and enough to get hop and you can see also if you go on the side by side you can see not only did we start to accelerate quicker but we are upwind now ignore this this line i just drew the marks on um after the fact i didn't record them at the time with pinging them or anything because um, not allowed to in our class so they're just approximate locations have dropped in but you can see we're quite a way upwind uh, these are boat lengths so probably one two three boat lengths directly to windward at that start and i think that's mostly about communication and having good transits sailing at lake garden no excuse not to have a good transit and you know me and guy had done a few opens already that season and got a few more races under our belt so just a little bit more on it the starting that was symptomatic throughout the racing really that we got generally better starts i think the only day that phil and john beat us in the start well we got an ocs in one race so obviously they beat us in that start but the only other race they got a better start than us was on the last day and that was more about getting over to the right quickly and i think in those two last races actually um the boat that had a better start kind of more to windward and going quicker always did worse in the race because actually what was what was important was protecting your option to tack out and go right towards the cliffs so different type of day but for the majority of the racing uh, getting a good start was key and the next moment in this race which i think was pretty interesting we crossed comfortably ahead you'll see in a few seconds but we are underneath this ley line and i think um generally me and guy had a bit more confidence to go early on the ley line risking a double tack and you know you do lose a decent amount if you double tack our best tacks are kind of like eight nine meters lost to windward um so two extra tacks you're talking 20 meters phil and john were always a little bit more conservative on the ley lines and there's actually quite a few races you see that from if i bring up the um the analytics if we have a look at that so this is race two and you can see um if i bring up the first upwind leg so this is what we're talking about we tacked early did the double tack in and come in and again they're always just pushing a bit past the lay race three sees so all the races put on ladders that's easy to see they always tend to go a little bit further out to the lay than we do again Phil and john go a little bit further and then are reaching around and if you look at the overall stats for the week they sell the further distance now, if you go over the ley line, it's not the end of the world because when they are over the ley, generally 
they're doing pretty good speed as they come in this this i should say this bit of software now is um nord analytics but online but you can see as they come in this is them reaching in they're doing kind of 11 knots upwind so pretty quick as they reach in from this so you do kind of gain back a little bit of that extra distance you sail by going faster when you're reaching in but i think me and guy were just a little bit sharper in terms of always going tight on the ley lines and then if we have to double tacking knowing that you know we'd only lose 20 meters if we put in a couple of good tacks whereas but another thing in this race which is quite interesting um was just how much um distance me and guy lost so we had a decent um lead at this woman mark the key moment was right down at the bottom and you can see the critical thing that we go for this jibe into into the gate but we jibe too early here and I'll, I'll zoom in on that we end up sailing low and slow you can see our speed over ground if i um go to that and bring up the plot again see our speed over ground is now pretty low as we as we sail in to this mark meanwhile the boys are all you know they're doing like 12 knots we're doing six knots as we go in our strategy was to go to that left hand mark as you look down wind to go back towards the cliffs where he thought there was more pressure so we did the right thing to put the extra jibe in and i think if you look on the side by side we're probably too high to get into um the starboard hand mark in one go anyway so we're always gonna have to do a jibe but we should have just waited a couple of seconds more but sitting really slow um you know as we come into this mark all this all this time here where we're down to like you know three knots whilst they're still doing 12 is just not particularly um not particularly good still have a little bit of um a lead due to us going around the favored mark okay so jumping into the side by side for when we have the next cross should see me and guy emerge into shot here we go you can see us just over here and um there we go it's a tight tight cross there for us the question is really you know what should you do in this situation obviously being ahead is good but you've got to think about the wider tactical view so i'll just zoom out you can kind of see where we are now um on the on the left hand side because it's a a tight cross you have to remember in this case by the time you've done the extra tack you're going to lose probably 10 meters maybe a little bit more so a tight cross like the one you see here on 1207 you know what are we like two boat lengths ahead something like that and if we zoom in on the side by side we'll probably be able to see exactly what it is in boat length so each one of these is a boat length so we're probably one two um two full boat lengths ahead here on this cross um and we know we're going to leave two boat lengths that is about 10 meters and we know we're going to lose 10 meters in the tack so when we come out this tack we're going to be pretty level with phil and john and i think this was basically a tactical m mistake to carry on here because of how far out left we are on the course if you get a lift from here then the boat to lose you makes it in one and you're left having to try and um kind of reach over the top of them you get a header then you've got a long time where they're gonna knock down you're gonna get knocked down into their dirty air and it's a long way back from that course sailing in someone's dirty air when you don't really want to be taking an extra tack up to the ley line and we can see how it plays out here in the side by side if i keep on playing we go for the tack there and as we come out the tack we are pretty much exactly level with them now this might not have been too bad um, if we'd have held this all the way to the ley line and then held them out for the tack and tacked inside of the ley line. But these guys are pretty quick and if there's any shifts on route, you know, if we get any slight sort of header and we get going to their dirty air, we're spat out immediately. Um, and as we flick forward up the beat, so jump forward and you can see we're just every time I jump, you can see we're close engage down to them until we're pretty much on their line 
And as we come into this women mark, we've lost the advantage that we did have because they're just going to be able to complete their attack on starboard. And we're going to either have to duck behind them, effectively lost that race on that on that call. I think we should definitely should have tacked before them. So if you are going to tack before another before another boat and lead them back across the course, then obviously you need to figure in that you're going to lose, you know, 10 meters at least an attack, maybe 15 meters. So you don't want to get rolled on the exit of that tack. If you tack too close to them, try and do a lee bow like you might do in a more um, kind of a slower boat that tacks proportionally quicker. Um, then you might want to put a lee bow attack in, but in the eight, lee bow attacks never really work unless you're actually a decent way ahead and we're not. So really we needed to be thinking about tacking kind of kind of 10, 15 boat lengths out. Rolls are now reversed for the final lap. Now Phil and John have a slightly different tactical situation in that they're actually quite a way ahead, you can see on the water at this point. So they have a few more um tactical options open to them and they play this very nicely actually they're not so friendly to us so we go for the tack there and because they're a decent way ahead um they have the option now uh what is their lead i think our lead was three boat lengths or two boat lengths 50 meters their lead is um yeah, they're 8.4 boat length, so 40 meters ahead. So they've got plenty of distance um, in there to put the um, put the covering tack in, which they do very nicely. And yeah, you can see really nice timing of that tack from them. The, they're right on our on our breeze, and from there you know, directly at wind of us and they just have the opportunity to um, foot off and control us. Again, we're on the left-hand side of this course, so the option for me and Guy to tack out, again, isn't really there. We've just got to try and live in this lane as best as possible. Race five, I think this was an um, interesting race in that it was one of the few races where we actually put tacks in at wind, so pretty much even obviously we got a slightly better start but at this point we were being headed down into a pack which was outright here and f again i think phil and john a little bit conservative because they didn't want to do too many tacks uh don't take the tack when they got the head and they sell the header into that of a fleet we tack hook into a different band of pressure and then again we're getting headed down into this pack outright so we take the tack and sell a nice lift um up to the mark and yes we have to tack onto a little bit of the header just to hitch around the mark but it leaves us with a, a decent i think our best um best kind of like upwind performance of the regatta in kind of shifty conditions just being prepared to do those extra few tacks we go to friday and look at the two races on friday and these are interesting because um what they actually show is the boat that lost the race lost the start on both of these so we we were a decent way down to leeward here up the line but this this day was all about going right to the cliffs and more of a traditional guard or race course so actually not being at the port favored end not being you know just having the space to tack out quickly and go right was what worked so you can see from the ladder rungs phil and john are ahead there but you know we're about level by how far into the race is this? Three minutes, 10, we're level. And then it just extends all this time. We're going that little bit quicker, kind of half a knot quicker all the way over here, saying a nice angle tack. By the time we clear ahead of the boys, we are, what, 25 boat lengths, 125 meters ahead. Um, and basically lead around that windward mark and that's a set for that race so yeah i hope that's been useful and it's shown you a little bit of what you can get out of the data from a race situation i think always what would be far better is basically you know if more people recorded then that would be awesome you get the full picture this is just two boats albeit two boats who were pretty close to each other for the regatta and 
two boats you know racing directly against each other at the front of the fleet um but it's always interesting you know it is fleet racing the fleet's key so the more people who can have gps on on the more you can like get into your analysis the more you can understand the the decisions in the context of the wider fleet as well which i think is quite important but yeah i think um not much in it if the guys were a little bit more practice on the starts had a little bit better course um awareness in terms of the ley lines and were a little bit more confident in their tacking so they were prepared either to take the shifts or prepared to go a little bit tight on the ley lines then i think that was the difference in the regatta really and it only came down to a few a few points at the end thanks to the lads for sharing their data and hopefully it's been interesting for you to see some analysis of proper race situations and uh yeah take care see you around